All right, welcome. I am Angela Timberlake. I am the Vice President of Elevate Women with the Jax USA, a division of the Jacksonville Chamber. And our vision is to make Northeast Florida a place where women can succeed both personally and professionally. As a community, we must ensure women have the same opportunities to advance in their careers to the highest level of leadership, whether that's an executive roles on corporate boards and political office or even in business ownership. When we do that, Northeast Florida becomes a destination where top talent can thrive, which means our business, our economy, and our culture thrive. So it's a win-win. However, the reality is women may face so many barriers to achieve the highest level. So Elevate Women's goal is to minimize or at least eliminate some of those barriers to level the playing field. One of those ways we plan to do that is to learn from others, learn from other successful women by hearing their stories. By doing this, we can enlighten the rest of us on the challenges that they've overcome, the successes that they're seeing now, what programs, what policies are working and why bringing diversity of thought to the decision maker level is an, a, a business imperative versus a nice thing to do. And above all, it's about being exposed to the power of possibility. If they can, you can, and so many others who may think it's impossible can as well. So we're going to flip the mindset of it's complicated to it's possible. So this is our Leaders Building Leaders series, and I am honored to be joined by this well-known, well-respected leader in local business as well as our community, Chantel Davis. Chantel is the Vice President of Sales of the Southeastern Region of Greenbrier Companies. She has an extensive career in real estate as well as sales and marketing. In addition to her day job, she serves on several boards across our community. She's also an honoree of the 2020 class women of influence for being recognized as a leader who has helped the community, has shaped the next generation and serves as a role model for the community. She's lived all across the US and now we are fortunate enough to have her back in Jacksonville. So Chantel, welcome. Thank you and thank you for the introduction. Yeah, Happy to be home. <laughs> yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> I bet you are. So I'm so glad that you're here and I want to give you an opportunity to sort of give a little bit more about you uh, and, and share your story of your journey into leadership. Sure. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity to, to just share a little bit about myself. Um, I am a native of Jacksonville. I'm born and raised in Jacksonville. Went to Mandarin High, University of North Florida for my undergrad and Jacksonville University for uh, my MBA. And um, started my career at CSX um, as a new business development specialist. Um, and basically just for the, la the next 20 years, um, grew and expanded in my roles with CSX. Uh, it afforded me the opportunity to move from Jacksonville uh, all the way to Vancouver, Washington. And um, and in that, in that role, I had the opportunity to continue to, to uh, move throughout um, the U.S. and the West Coast and East Coast. Um, came back to Florida to head up our fertilizer uh, group with CSX. And uh, most recently, am here back in Jacksonville working for the Greenbrier Companies, who's ironically based in Portland, Oregon. So I, I get to go back um, to where it all began. So, um, but I'm, I'm excited to be here um, working back in Jacksonville, living back in Jacksonville um, and serving our community. Great. Such a such an amazing story and, and a great career. So congratulations to you and all your success. Now I want to talk about, so he, we're here as leaders building leaders. So tell me a little bit about what you're seeing, um, qualities of successful leaders, especially in your industry. You know, I think that qualities of, of a successful leader, um, it transcends the, the industries and it really is about the person, um, the qualities that a leader should possess, you know, being, hum having humility, um, being self-motivated, knowing who you are um, and sticking to your core brand are, are really, really important as you trans transcend um, to different parts of or an organization or 
um, you know, get promoted into different areas. Um, you know, it's about the integrity, the ethics, the morals, the values, um, staying true to yourself, you know, um, and, and really knowing that it, as a leader, part of your role is to also be a team player in, in various aspects. I mean, that that's from, you know, leading your team. Uh, I was oftentimes, there, there would be times when if my team is doing something or if there's a project, I'm right there, you know, in the middle with them. Uh, if we're staying, if they're staying up until seven, eight o'clock at night, so am I. Uh, because I think that that's important, that, that they know that it's not just a, a title, um, but it's also a, a servant's heart that is required to, to be a leader. And so, um, you know, I think that just being honest, being ethical, uh, being accountable, holding yourself accountable and, and holding others accountable and, and setting the right examples at all times uh, just makes one a, a really good leader. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing. Now, would you say that you've had role models that you built this from, or, or some of it is, is that just innate in who you are? I definitely have had great role models um, on both sides, quite honestly. Um, and, you know, some of, some of my best mentors, my best lead bosses have been those who saw more in me than I saw in myself. And, um, and who emulated something that I, I wanted to see in me. And, you know, I remember my, my first, uh, one of my first directors in when I, when I started at CSX, you know, fresh out of college, um, not really knowing what I, what I wanted to do, but just knowing that I wanted, you know, to be successful and, and, and make my parents proud and, and all those things. Um, he, he really took me under his wing and, and, showed me the ropes, showed me that what I should do, what I shouldn't do, um, was very open and honest with me and, um, and shared a lot of his, his background um, and the things that, that helped him, the things that were stumbling blocks for him. Um, and and I, that was just, that was so helpful to me because I saw in him what I wanted to be. Um, you know, I, I saw in my mom, for instance, you know, a, a woman, leader, mom, wife, all those things, uh, trying to, to raise us. And I was like, whatever it is that, you know, she, she made it look so easy. Um, and, and we know it's not easy. Uh, and I tell her that now I'm like, you know, you, you lied. Like, how did you, how did you make it look so easy? Um, but it's, it's really about, you know, the people pouring into, into us. And, um, that's why it's so important to me to pay it forward because people, believed in me more than I believed in myself. Um, and, and that still happens today. And, and I'm so appreciative to, to those who take the time to pour into me and, um, and to set a good example for me that I can set for others as well. That's so empowering. I, lo I love to hear that. Um, because I think there's so many, there's so many people that influence us in, in our journey. Um, and it's and it's about embracing those that that maybe some somewhat of a surprise in some of the qualities in yourself. So I, I love to hear that. Now it, we all face challenges, right? So let's talk about some of the things that maybe surprised you as a leader. You know, what were some of the blind spots that you didn't really see stepping into um, your senior leadership role now? You know, it's it's almost like getting a, a glimpse behind the curtain. Um, and we all think that it's, it's easier for people, um, not knowing, you know, what, what they have to encounter or, um, what, you, what the buy-in that you have to get to the consensus that you have to make all these things that, um, all we see, you know, at times is, is what happens at the end result, but it's all the things that come into play in the middle that, um, what I, I just was not aware of. And, um, and that, you know, at different levels requires a, a different set of skill sets, a, a different level of confidence that you might have or might have to fake until you really have, um, you know, all these things that, that make you an effective leader, um, but also help your teams to be better. And so it, the things that I, that I didn't know was, was that, that the consensus that you had to get um, the, the, that you, you really had to come in and sell, you, you was constantly selling, you know, your, your opinion or, um, the decision that you make, because 
is no longer just about the decision you're making for you. You're making it for the organization. You're making it for, you know, hundreds of people. Um, and so you, you, you got to get that consensus from others, you know, and, and make sure that you're not walking into something blind um, and being open enough to listen when, when others have uh, ideas or recommendations or have you thought about it this way. Um, and so there's a lot of background that is necessary to, to accomplish a goal, especially, you know, as b- the bigger the goal, the bigger the, the, the background um, work that you have to make and, and the consensus that you have to build. And, and at the same time, being willing to recognize that, you know, you might have to change, your, your position might have to change, um, your, your, your stance on something might have to change after you've gotten more feedback and being okay with that. So it's, there was, there was just behind the curtain, um, it was, it was eye opening for me and it still is. Yeah, no, no matter, I think, no, no matter the level you get to, that's always going to be the case, right? Um, and those that embrace it and continue to evolve and adapt are those that are the most successful. So that's great to hear. Um, and, and I, you know, I think for so, so many women that I talk to have a fear of not having it all in order to raise their hand and say, I'm ready for the next level. So it's great to, to hear that, you know, you continue to learn, you learn as you go. Um, and you didn't necessarily fake it till you make it, but it's, it's a little bit of, you know, having the confidence in what you bring to the table, but still being comfortable to learn, evolve, adapt, and grow. Right. Great. I love it. Now, um, who are some of the, um, you talked about, you know, one of your mentors, but did you formally look for a mentor or a sponsor in order to um, really enhance your career? You know, I, I think for me, I, I honestly didn't. That was one of the things that I, and, and I think even for women, that we're, we're not as good at doing those things. And so I wasn't aware, for instance, that like a lot of my male counterparts had mentors and, you know, men take on other men. And that's, that's something that I challenge myself to do now more than ever, because I know that it's necessary. And so I never um, went and, and formally sought out mentors. Thankfully, uh, they, they, there were those people who, who poured into me. And now that's one of the things that I, that I am doing and, and that um, I, I am more conscious of. Um, but, it, but growing into my career, it, it, it wasn't something that I thought was even a sponsor, for instance. I didn't even know what that meant until, you know, years into my career. And now it's like, yeah, it's necessary. And, um, and sometimes, and I see now why people seek you out versus you seeking them out. Because I, I also believe that mentorship and those relationships have to be um, genuine. And, and, it, and it is a two-way street. Um, the, the greatest mentorship re- relationships that I have um, are those where I've gained probably more than those that I've mentored. Um, and, and they probably don't even realize it. You know, it, 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 makes, it does truly make you a better person, um, a more well-rounded person uh, to, to just pour into someone else. And so, no, I, I, never, I never really um, sought out mentors, you know, growing into my career. But um, I do know that that is definitely something that is that is necessary um, and, and something that happens all the time. Yeah, and it's, it's funny for our, for our counterparts, it just seems to happen naturally, yeah. right? And um, for women, we tend to just um, go it alone for, for most mm-hmm. of the time. Um, and, and then it, it just sort of happens to us. So it's great to hear that we're not alone in that situation. <laughs> it's pretty common. Um, now, thinking, thinking back, is there anything that you would do differently in your journey? I would definitely believe in myself more. Um, you know, I, again, it, I was blessed to have people who believed in me and, but I, you know, had that not happened, it, I don't know, you know, where my, where my career tra- trajectory would have been. Um, but, but really believing in myself a little bit more, um, stepping out, taking, taking some risks. Um, I, I'm not necessarily a risk taker, but, um, you know, for me moving to Vancouver, Washington from Jacksonville, and that being my first major move, um, 
I, I, I told my, my then CEO, our C, chief commercial officer at the time, uh, I said, either you love me or you hate me because you're, you're you know, basically sending me this, this far away. And, and he said, if I hated you, you'd know it. And, uh, and, and, and he was, again, one, another mentor that um, he said, you know, I, I'm looking at you as, as a daughter. And would I want my daughter to go this far away? No. But do I know that it would be, it's going to be great for her to do it? Yes, definitely. Um, and so uh, just another, another person who was a mentor that, that didn't necessarily, you know, have that hat on at all times, but, um, but poured into me. And so I think, you know, taking, taking more risk, um, being more open to change and, and um, challenging myself and, and believing in myself, really, I, I, I can't, I look back on my career now and it's like, wow, you know, it's still, it, it still is very humbling to see, um, you know, the things that, that with, with the help of others and with the help of God and, and my family support that um, I was able to accomplish. And, um, and a lot of that is, is just because of those who believed in me, you know, me, you know, doing the things that I needed to do as well, because that's the one thing as a woman, you you know, we, we know that we have to give it our all and then some, you know, you, you made it to the room. Now you've got it to show that you belong in the room all the time. And so, you know, being, being able to, to adapt and, um, and contribute, you know, 150% as much as possible, you know, was, was something that was uh, always top of mind for me. Yeah, and it does, and it adds to the additional pressure. So let's talk about that a little bit, right? We're all experiencing added pressure right now, given the the, the climate, um, everything that's happening in our nation here locally. Um, so talk to me a little bit about how how are you managing this? Because what we're seeing right now is 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 women are actually leaving the workforce, and it could potentially get um, a little bit more complicated. Um, so tell me a little bit, how are you managing and how is your company giving you the flexibility to be a mom, to, to, to do all of the necessary things that you need to do? Yeah, I, I uh, am blessed to work for a really great company, um, really great leaders. The, the, the Greenbrier companies, uh, they, our CEO lives what he says. And, you know, I, I actually started with them March 1st. And then COVID happened, right? And so I was in um, in Portland um, the first week of March, and then it like the whole you know our life changed. And so starting a new job, uh, homeschooling a kindergartner, um, you know, being a single mom, all these things. It was like I, I became the master juggler. I I can juggle balls like the best of them, and. Uh, but but part of that was having the 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 assistance you know from from family and friends and having the a company who understands that you know we, we are uh, parents first and um, and and w w there are things that we have to do that are just you know you have to do you you have to make sure that your house stays whole um, but also that you know I, I have a job to do and and it's and it's my job to give every piece that I can as much of me. And, and you know, sometimes that, that's, that's not easy. Um, women seem to do it, we, we, we do it well, I think. Um, and, uh, and we do it gracefully. And then, you know, then, then you get to breathe and then you move on. And so for me, it was really, this, this 2020 was, was quite the year. Um, it, was, it was a year of, of new beginnings in a lot of ways. And so, um, you know, definitely having the support of my company, having, uh, my village around me to help me with, with my daughter, um, and, and really just continuing to hone in on my skills, uh, and, and what I brought to the table was, uh, was really important to me. I, I, I really had to understand what those were, um, and not try to second guess myself in the middle of all this change and chaos that was happening around us. That's great. And now, was your company, was, was Greenbrier, um, did they already have sort of flexibility built in or was that something that um, was adapted based on COVID? Um, I, I think there was a level of flexibility that was built in, uh, but at the same time, what was most important were, was are the employees and, the, and the, our customers and our families. And so 
Um, it was, you know, don't do anything that would compromise your health, your well-being, the well-being of others around you. Um, but we have, we have a job to do. And so how do we do it and how do we do it well um, under this, in this new environment? And so we, we adapted quickly. Uh, but at the same time, you know, so was everyone else. And I think that's what made it easier, you know, in, in air quotes, was because while we were adapting, so was the rest of, of the world, right? And, and everybody was trying to figure it out. Um, you know, everyone was staying at home. And so it was, it was uh, a lot of what the company's culture was about that, that made it easier to transition to something like this. Uh, but at the same time, it was also understanding that, you know, each individual, we, we have a job to do. And, and my goal is to maintain, you know, the, the profitability of our, of our company and to give my, my all to, to my company and my customers. And so uh, figuring out how to do that, I think was, was part of probably one of the, the, one of the balls that, were, that was in the air that I had to, to juggle. And, um, and it, you know, you, you, you try every day is, is a different day and, and um, new challenges exist. And, and, you know, the list that you created in, in the morning is definitely not the list that you have by the end of the day. And, and so, you know, being okay with that um, and, uh, and progressing every day and, and just trying to make sure that I'm giving my all to, to all pieces of, of the puzzle. And, you know, it, people talk about work-life balance and, um, it's like balance is whatever it is for that day. You know, it is whatever it is for that 15 minutes or 30 minutes. It, it changes so much, um, that I had to be okay with that. And, um, and I had to be okay with, with every once in a while, that means that, you know, I'm, I'm going to be up until 11, 12 o'clock doing work because now I'm homeschooling. And, um, you know, there, there are different things that, that need to take precedent over, over one over the other. And so, um, you know, but, but the company in and of itself was, is a company that um, supports its people and, and appreciates family and um, puts that above all, all others. That's great to hear. And it is, it's a constant balance um, every day. Um, so I, I think it's, it's great to hear that, that you're figuring out how to maneuver that and, and how to sort of stay sane in all the chaos that's <laughs> going on. <laughs> we have to, right? Exactly. Um, so let's keep, let's stay on that sort of topic about the company itself. So um, one of the other uh, conversations that's happening now is equity, right, and, and diversity. So how is how is your company approaching that, and um, what what are they doing to embrace diversity and thought at the leadership level? So so the first thing is uh, is acknowledging that it's necessary. And acknowledging that uh, you know we there are differences that exist, and it's it's our job to first acknowledge and appreciate the differences, and then help each other understand those differences, and 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 quite frankly use those differences to make us better, right? And so one of the great things that um, that happened when a lot of the change was happening in in, in society and. Um, I, like I said, I just started with, with uh, the Greenbrier companies and our CEO sent a, um, this, this email that just talked about valuing people. And, uh, you know, there was no greater, per no one was greater than the other, but we, we are all in this together. And I was like, is this guy real? Like he, it was, it was as if my, my dad or, or, you know, a mentor was talking to me. And to me specifically, not, you know, 4,000 employees. And what I appreciate so much about that is, is that is who we are as an organization. Um, we are family. We are, and, and so family holds each other accountable, right? And, and family supports each other. Uh, behind closed doors, we can fight. But outside, you know, we are one unified front. And that's what I, I love about uh, what our leadership has done. And so they've, they've embraced it in such a way that it's, it's, it's not the, the, the sexy thing. You know, it's not the thing that, okay, everybody's doing it. And, and so therefore we're going to do it too. And, and so we can check this box. It's, it's real. And um, they, they seek feedback. And I, I'm on a, a committee that the, that the company put together 
uh, called Ideal. And it's, it's really about how do we bring everyone together? How do we celebrate diversity of thought, of, of color, of gender, you know, of, of all these things and, and, and hone in on it to make us a better company. And because we, we have, we have locations in Mexico, we have all across the U S and so, you know, making sure that everyone feels valued is, uh, is the goal, you know, because what I found is when, when all of my team members feel like they have a voice and that they have meaning, um, we're so much better. We're so much more productive. Uh, we all win, you know, and, and so them embracing that because it's the right thing to do and not because it's, it's what everybody's doing or it's checking a box or it's going to make us look good. Um, it, and it, and it's innate in them to do it. It, it just makes you, it makes me want to go to work every day and, and, and work harder every day because we as an organization have something to prove, like we're going to get this right. And, um, we have great women leaders. We have a great board of a diverse board um, of women, men, at, uh, African American. Uh, it's, it's so they're walking the walk and, and talking the talk. And so that I think that is like one of the things that, as I look at what's important to for me to support an organization, those are the things that matter. Um, that you're going to give me an opportunity to excel, to to contribute that I can do the same for somebody else and, um, and that together we all win. That's fantastic. Now, what is one, and I think companies are all trying to figure this out, right? And, and um, so what is one thing that you could suggest given your perspective, given you know, how progressive Greenbrier Companies is, what is one thing that you could advise um, leaders to do that would you know, push them in that direction of thinking about diversity first? You know, at first, acknowledging that it's necessary, that, you know, um, that the skill sets that, that, for instance, women have, we, we, we can juggle like the best of them. We, we can turn it, we can, we can cry on one end and, and walk into a boardroom and, and give a, a, a stellar presentation and then walk back out and, and go pick up a kid, you know, and, and so em embracing the fact that the diversity of, of people and thought, uh, that is necessary. That's, that, that is the only way that if we're going to be a part of a global economy, um, if we're going to be a part of global change, then you have to not, not only just say, yep, it's, but you have to believe it, you know, and, and you have to uh, show it in, in what you do and not just in the the programming because everybody can put on programming right we can all put it on and have an affinity groups and inclusion groups and all these you know fun and sexy ways of calling out diversity um but what are you doing really and what are your numbers showing you know are you showing that you have women who are in leadership roles or does your board exemplify what your what your employees look like um you know it, those are the things that matter so it's not just you know making making doing it because it's it's what's the newest thing to do right now because you know i'm going to sign this and say that i am a part of you know this whole diversity and inclusion uh train that everybody's on it's no it's 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 actually the right thing to do and these and, and there's actually so much that comes out of having a table full of different people um and and giving voice to those, to those people and, and listening, you know, uh, I just think that that if, if you do it and do it authentically and, uh, and lead it and not just to say it, but, but be a part of it, um, like as Bill has done, it, it matters. And it's, especially in, in this environment that we're living in, it's necessary. You know, I, you, you have to believe that, that you matter, you know, people have to believe that what they're contributing to an organization, especially in a time when we, when we're just so uncertain about everything else that, you know, I come to work every day, I show up and I, and I give my all and my company appreciates that. Uh, it matters to people right now. It matters more than, than ever, uh, I think in, in this environment that we're in right now. And so I think that, you know, having leadership, having um, the executive part, body, having the board, um, having your customers, quite frankly, 
everybody on the same page in that diversity matters, people matter, um, that, that we're better together than, than separate. All those things, you know, just make for us a, a better community overall. So well said. And when it starts from the top, it just permeates through the organization. So right. it's it's great to hear. All right. So we're we're close to wrapping up. So I want to leave this audience with your advice. We have uh, so many women that maybe have fears that maybe have um, a little bit of the imposter syndrome. They have all of these, this baggage that we carry with us. So in the, in the, in the spirit of it's possible, what, what's the one thing, one piece of advice that you can give women that want to elevate their career and get and step into that next level? Well, I, you know, I would say first, truly believe in yourself. Um, you know, we, we do all the things that we have to do to make a, a place for ourselves in the room. We, we, we get the education, we, you know, we, we do our jobs well, we show up and we're not just there, but we're present, we're, we're accounted for, we are, we're giving of, of ourselves. And so believe that, believe that, that you deserve to be where you are. Um, believe that you de deserve to be beyond where you are. Uh, and then and then seek after that and and do it authentically do it um, with humility do it understanding that it's not always going to be easy it, it quite frankly isn't easy um, but it's necessary I see what what I do as something that I'm, I'm contributing for my daughter and for our daughters and for other women uh, so, so when you get discouraged, know that it's, it's not, you're not doing this for you. You're doing it because somebody else is watching you. Somebody else needs you, quite frankly, to, to do this, to be who you are so that they can be who they are, um, and, and, and embraced and, and loved and appreciated for what we bring to the table. Um, know, you know, know that risk is necessary. Um, change is, is, is inevitable. Uh, and uh, we, we have to just be ready for those things to happen. Um, and when, when you're in the room, know that you deserve to be there. It, 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 it may not feel that way because oftentimes, and, and Angela, I'm sure you, there have been times when you've been the only woman in the room. And, and many, many times I've been the only woman in the room and, and the only African-American slash woman, you know, so, so I, get, I get the double whammy. And so it's, it's, it's hard, but you put on your, you put on your face and you smile and, and you take a deep breath and you say, yeah, I belong here because we do, we do, we've worked hard for it. Um, and, and, and it's our time to, to not only stay there, but to, to broaden that area, move that room around so that we can bring others in there with us. So well said. You, can, you inspire so many people around you, um, and I'm just so thankful that you are willing to share your story, share your advice, um, because it does make a difference, and, and, it, and it really does. We learn from each other, we hold each other up, um, and we are, we are connected more than we think we are. So yes, we are. Thank you so much. It's been an honor and a pleasure to have you here, um, and, and I, I look forward to seeing you continue to thrive in our community. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity and, and, and congratulations to Elevate Women. I'm so excited about what we are accomplishing. I, I told you when, when we first met that I'm all in this with you and, um, and I am. We are, I'm lockstep, sister. So um, I love whatever it. you need. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's so amazing. I know everybody's right there behind me and it feels just so empowering and I love it. Awesome. Well, thank well, you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, audience. Thank you for joining our Leaders Building Leaders session. Stay tuned for our next uh, amazing guest. Thank you.